Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Bible class. Let's start with prayer. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for each one of our children and the big person helping today. Help us to have a good day. Help the kids to listen, learn, and help them to obey with a happy heart. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's go over our verses. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Boom, boom, boom. John 1, 3. All things were made by him. Ephesians 6, 1, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Oh, I start up. Children, obey, children, obey your parents in the Lord, your parents in the Lord. Children, obey, children, obey, for this is right. For this is right. Oh, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Children, obey. For this is right. Children, obey. Children, obey. For this is right. Ephesians 4.32. Be kind one to another. Psalm 139, 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 1830, as for God, his way is perfect. Oh, this one's about David. We've been learning about David. He's going to be in our story again today. The, Psalm 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. This week's verse is found in Philippians 4.19, a great promise. My God shall supply all your needs. Supply means to make sure you have what you need, right? My God shall supply all your needs. One more time. My God shall supply all your needs. Our story today is about David. Now, remember, David was working for the king. And after, um, after he killed Goliath, the king's son, Jonathan, thought, wow, what a great young man. He loves God. He trusts God. He's brave. He's respectful. I want him for my friend because that's the kind of person I like. Now, Jonathan was, was much older than David. He was probably old enough to be David's dad, that much older. But Jonathan, they just became the closest, closest friends. And whenever they could, they spent time together. Even though they were so different in age, even though they were so different, one was a servant, the other was the, a prince, it didn't matter friends. In fact, they became such good friends that Jonathan, the king's son, gave David his robe and his, his sword and his bow and his arrow. Very few people had a sword. Very, very, very few people. David didn't have one. Oh, no, 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 no. But the, but the prince did. He gave his sword, the thing that protected his life, gave that to David. He gave him his bow and his arrow because David just fought with a sling. He taught David how to use the bow and arrow, how to make the arrows. He taught him all that stuff. And he just taught David whatever he could. But he gave him that special robe to show that he was the son of the king. Remember, David could have married the princess and been the king's son. But he said, I'm a servant. Well, anyway, years passed, and Jonathan and the king were killed in battle. And David became the new king. 
he was very sad that he was so so sad that his friend Jonathan was killed in battle because he wanted John, Jonathan knew he was going to be king that David would be king and he didn't care that he wouldn't be king he was happy that his best friend was going to be king and but he wanted to keep helping him but that wasn't God's plan Jonathan got killed in battle and David became king but David and Jonathan had a promise and David promised that if anything ever happened to Jonathan that he would take care of his family. Well, David was living away from home for a long time, and he really didn't know what was going on with Jonathan, but he did hear he was killed. Well, David became king, and he got very, very busy. And from time to time, he would think about his best friend, but he didn't know if Jonathan had any children. He didn't know, because he had been away for so long. And after things settled down in the kingdom for many years, David said, you know what? I made a promise to Jonathan, to Jonathan that I would take care of his family. I don't even know if he has any children. And he asked his servants, he said, does anybody know? Did Jonathan have any children? And there was a, there was one servant named Ziba. And Ziba said, yes, sir. Jonathan had one son. His name was Mephibosheth. And when, when Jonathan was killed in battle, Mephibosheth was only five years old. Mephibosheth, that's a long name. Mephibosheth was only five years old. And the people, the people were afraid that someone would come and kill little Mephibosheth, that the enemies would kill him. And so the woman who took care of him, his nurse, who took care of him, took him and picked him up and ran to hide so that nobody could find him and hurt him. And she was running and running right now, a little five-year-old boy, that's the age of the size of you guys in here, right? Five years old. And she was running, carrying him, because he ran too slowly. And she tripped and she fell. And Jonathan broke his legs. I mean, not Jonathan, little Mephibosheth's legs got broken. He never walked again. Well, they hid little Mephibosheth away and didn't tell anybody where he was, just so he would be safe. David did not know that. So he said, Ziba, see, Ziba used to work for the, for the King Saul, David's boss. He said, Ziba, go get Mephibosheth. I want him to live here at the palace with me. I want him, to, I want to take care of him. And so Mephibosheth, um, Ziba went he got Mephibosheth, and he brought him before the king. Now, everything that King Saul had was given to David when he became king. He got everything that belonged to the king. And so everything that belonged to Mephibosheth, that belonged to his daddy and his grandpa, he didn't have anything. It was all given away to the king. The king didn't know that. And so poor Mephibosheth grew up. And he was very, he was poor. He didn't have much. And he was lame, he couldn't walk. Very rough life. And he was brought before the king and he was scared. He thought the king might kill him because that's what he had been told. Oh, you can't tell anybody who you are. They'll kill you, the king will kill you. And David said to Mephibosheth, he said, don't be afraid, son. He said, don't be afraid. I'm not going to hurt you. He said, your daddy and I were the best of friends. We were the very, very best of friends. And I made a promise to your daddy that if anything happened to him, I would take care of his family. I did not know. I didn't know about you. I was away from home for a number of years, and I didn't see your daddy but a, couple, a few times. So I didn't know about you. Otherwise, I would have taken care of you. From this day, everything that belonged to your daddy, everything that belonged to King Saul, your grandpa, belongs to you now. And all your daddy's servants, all your grandpa's servants, they're going to come work for you. They're going to come work for you. But I don't want you to live away. I want you to live here at the palace with me. And every day, I want you to eat your food at my table. I want you to be my 
my son. Now David had other sons, but he said, no, I want you to be my son too. And so everything that used to belong to King Saul and everything that belonged to Mephibosheth's daddy, Jonathan, was given to him. And the servants were given to him to take care of all his property. And he and David made sure that he had clothes to wear because he got the money, right? All his daddy's money. He had nice new clothes to wear. He had plenty of food to eat because he ate at the king's table every day. He had a nice place to live. He was poor before. He didn't know that the king loved him, but the king did. As soon as the king found out about him, he took care of him. The Bible tells us that when we are born, we have two daddies. We have a daddy that lives in your house or wherever he lives. And then you have another daddy. And the Bible says that daddy is the devil. Mm -hmm. And you have to ask God to be your daddy. God made you. God made you. But you know what? You're separated from God because the, the devil's your daddy. David wasn't Mephibosheth's daddy, so Mephibosheth couldn't live in his house. Mephibosheth lived far away, and so he was poor. But King David said, I want you to be my son. Now Mephibosheth had a choice to make. He could come live at the king's house, or he could say, no, I don't want that. Wouldn't that be foolish for him to say, no, I don't want to live at the king's house. I don't want all that good stuff. No, that would be very foolish, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. But what did, what did Mephibosheth do? He said, yes, I'll live at the king's house. I'll let you be my new daddy. Yes, I would love that. And you can I'll let you take care of me. That's what God wants to do with each one of you, each one of his children. He made everybody, but you know what? They have a different daddy the same way. Mephibosheth had a different daddy, Jonathan. But when he, when, when he said, yes, king, I want you to be my new daddy, he got to live at the palace. And God says to you, I want you to be my child. I want you to say, no, I don't want to listen to the devil anymore. I don't want him to be my daddy. I want God to be my daddy now. And I want to obey him and honor him and do what pleases him. And if we do that, then God will take care of us. He'll supply all our needs. That's our verse this week. My God shall supply all your needs. As long as Mephibosheth was living away from King David, David couldn't take care of him. But when he said, yes, I will, I will let you be my daddy. I will live at your house. Then he could have all the riches that King David had for him. This year, we're going to be talking about how you can have God as your daddy. You don't have to have the devil as your daddy anymore. Mm -mm. You have to leave him and say, I don't want him as my daddy. The same way Mephibosheth said, I want you to be my daddy. Mm -hmm. We're going to be talking about how you can do that this year and how you can have every one of God's promises. My God shall supply all your need. Our verse last week was, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. But the Lord has to be your shepherd. God has to be your daddy if you want him to give everything that you need. Let's say our verse three more times and then we'll be done for today. My God shall supply all your need. My God shall supply all your need. One more time. My God shall supply all your need. And God promises to do that too when you become his child, when he is your dad.